Weekly Daily Linux News, where we can sit back, relax, take that mm-hmm. midweek break, and cover some of the things going on in Linux and open source that <laughs> we found interesting. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, uh, trying to put out fires mostly. That is oh. Jill Bryant in <laughs> Space LA, and the man on the island in Britannia is one Pedro Mateus. Hello. Hello, beautiful <laughs> people, and you at home joining us live. It's kind of brilliant. Taking time out of the best day of the week, right? <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> it's the average day of the week because it's in the middle. <laughs> average day. Yes. Hey, listen, that, that's what we aim for on this show is average. <laughs> oh, we're failing. Uh, oh, we're failing. no. <laughs> we we got to step up our average game. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I got a case of computer legs. Do you two know what yeah. that is? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's when you don't trust the computer you're currently running the show on. <laughs> it's when you have to bend down on, like, bend down and work on it when it's on the floor. Poor Ben. Jill's correct. <laughs> no, I had to pull the box apart. More on that at eleven. But it, anytime you have your tower on the floor, this always results in the bending down, squatting, moving, getting in weird. Which the day after you go, wow, I'm out of shape. Because your thighs are just okay. That's new. Mm. Put it on the dinner table. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's lazy. I do things. Oh, that. that's, that, that's why I have a workbench, Ben. <laughs> so, um, what else do we got, uh, Jill? What's new with you? Yeah. Scale Hack Night, Riot Games. Yeah, so I went to Community Hack Night at Riot Games once again on Monday night. And did a lot more scale prep for our Linux Gamecast, oh. Lutris, and Linux Chicks LA booze and events and hosts coming out for the event. So very excited about that. A lot going on. <laughs> I just realized I'm like way back here, but we're, we're just going to have to deal with that for this episode. Um, most okay. of you are listening anyway. <laughs> I'll redo that shot for next week. Pedro, what's going on? You never write anything down and I'm tempted no, one of these no. weeks. I'm just going to skip you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, nothing really happened. You saw the stream yesterday. I talked about most of the stuff then, so yeah. <laughs> no, Pedro, like most people, I put it on mute and watch it. Oh, uh, I'm sorry then. <laughs> <laughs> you, you played a beverage from the 90s. <laughs> yes, which is also a Dark Souls clone. Go figure. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, uh, the, the game in itself mm-hmm. is very much a carbon copy of Dark Souls. It's just the, uh, setting that it's different. It's sci-fi instead of fantasy. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and I could see all the criticism because that game came out several years ago. And I could see all the criticisms that I'd read about it show up right in front of my eyes. Like, oh, that's why people were saying that. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want it. <sighs> Again, I I wasn't listening, but I had it on, and I just was watching your play mechanic of like, whoop, nope, 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 let's run back over here. Yes, Wait. because mm. you don't want to fight two enemies in that game. You don't want to fight two enemies at the same time. That's how you die. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> let's get right into it then. Uh, Ubuntu 18.04.2 LTS Bionic Beaver has been delayed. For Valentine's Day, due to a boot error, mm-hmm. Canonical announced mm-hmm. today that the upcoming 1804.2 LTS operating system will be delayed a week until February 14th due to a boot error that cannot be fixed in time, which is responsible, and I did not have any issue with this whatsoever. Jill? Yeah. Well, I'm glad they waited a week before this bug was released in the wild with disastrous results <laughs> and was happy to hear that Ubuntu 18.04.2 LTS will ship with Ubuntu's 18.10 Cosmic Cuttlefish graphic stack and kernel. So we get get a new kernel and updated Mesa drivers. Yay. That's very much a good thing, <laughs> as long as all the bugs are worked out. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know, uh, I wrote in the notes, it's like, you know, a week's delay, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, if you're fixing a boot a bug, problem. that's great. Easy peasy. And then Ven comes back, it's like, yeah, Aww. it happened again. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, it was an issue, they, but it, it, it's been fixed. Uh, there was a small issue earlier this week where your system wouldn't boot 
but yeah it know. was a regression mm -hmm. with the intel drivers mm -hmm. specifically the yeah. kernel portion of the intel uh chipset drivers yeah that was stopping systems from booting altogether oh. <laughs> at least it gets sorted uh but on the upside i got to play with 1810 <laughs> yes, did you did. <laughs> Loved it. It was great. <laughs> I didn't have to do a thing, Aww, man. Poor Vin. <laughs> it made me brunch. I mean, it's awesome. Squid, squid brunch, man. Uh, I I don't want to go into a lot of it because I'm I'm, I'm going to snap in the next moment. But uh, there's a lot of stuff, uh, Pedro. We were talking about it earlier. If you choose not to use um, gnome, mm -hmm. like. A sane person. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to your hate mail. With XFC, <laughs> you really can't do anything that requires an administrator password, right? You, what were you saying about yeah, that? Yeah, no, because uh, GK Sudo has been deprecated. So if you want to use um, a GUI pseudo password handler thingy, you need like PK exec, mm. which has issues and you have to manually go in and replace all the exact commands for all of the dot dels uh pk exec executable or you're going to have to create your own <laughs> oh that sounds absolutely yeah. interesting no. uh i did run into a few things uh the ffmpeg that it was shipping doesn't have indian code support and the snap doesn't work without so i just ripped that out rebuilt that Managed to make all that happy, fun stuff work, but File Roller uh, didn't work with Thunar, which I was like, oh, huh. okay. It, wasn't that the default for a while? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> you know, you highlight, and I'm like, okay, right click, add to archive, and it's like, nope, can't work. It's not happening. So. Hmm. What? <laughs> oh, Known bug. Google it. <laughs> the other bug I ran into, which, you know, I was, you know, I, I was talking to Jordan Jones, like, who uses Totem? Or I forget who exactly it was. And it's like, mm -hmm. I, I use it just like A B test between VLC when we do videos. That don't mm -hmm. work. I don't work on nothing. I, I usually install Totem because it pulls a bunch of dependencies that I need. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, there we go. Just pull that down. I never use it, but all of the dependencies I kind of do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, my, but at least Xorg config works. Not really. Does it now? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that's my report. Um, th this is nothing. I mean, I think anybody who has used desktop um, Ubuntu has their D Ubuntuing scripts together yes. for these exact same <laughs> reasons. I was saying before the show, I thought maybe it would be interesting if there was a workstation variant from Bare Canonical, -ish. you know? Yeah. 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 Like maybe something that could actually boot on a 2060. That'd be yeah. interesting too. <laughs> but, you know, that'd be too easy. All right. Uh, let's get into this. Okay, so Canonical is most certainly not having a good week because besides the uh, glaring uh, YouTube boot issues and then the uh, graphics drivers uh, or chipset um, regression, they also have a problem with snaps. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, researcher discovered a vulnerability and they reported it to Canonical, as they should. Very well done. Uh, and uh, then they, once Canonical had fixed it and had pushed out the uh, the updates, he released the proof of concept and everything else that he could find about it. And he called it Dirty Sock. And if the name doesn't give it away, it's because it's a socket. It's a software <laughs> socket uh, on an API call, specifically the REST API that Snap uses, which wasn't getting closed properly. It was used, but then was left open. So it caused a privilege escalation, as you would expect, because it's, yeah, it's an API socket that's running from the snap daemon. So, you know, the vulnerability was fixed, and it's already been fixed upstream, and if you've been keeping your Ubuntu installs up to date, chances are you're, you're already on the latest version. It's just that Canonical, lately, they've been bragging. It's like, oh, we are the top um, cloud service provider distro, and we have, like, these many servers running Ubuntu server. Yeah, I hope all of those servers are keeping their Snapd package up to date. They should if not, be. They should th be. 
Damn. Well, yeah. you know, the bad ones are, but you got to think about, you know, to their credit, you know, canonical life, that is where it's deployed in the cloud, you know, not yeah. just like, hey, look at our footprint here. That doesn't worry me as much as one of the things I've seen with snaps are like, yo, and something that I was like, oh, okay, there's a use case for snap that I don't think's weird. Mm -hmm. Embedded devices, IoT yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about something that never mm -hmm. gets updated. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> that might be a problem, but hey, at least it was fixed um, yes. as of 237. Yep. I want to be honest with you. I, you know, I did a snap, uh, whatever the command is, list or whatever. To... Sudo app purge snap D. <laughs> well, yeah. I, that, that, it was sudo app auto remove purge snap D gnome mm -hmm. software plugin mm -hmm. snap, followed by RMFR snap directory. After figuring out what exactly an 1810 was a snap, it wasn't a lot, but I did wonder, uh, Gnome System Manager, which is a Swiss Army chainsaw. <laughs> it's a great, great tool. It's been around forever, and it's good to see your bandwidth and core usage. I'm clicking, I'm like, why? Uh, there it come. All right, what's going It was a snap. <laughs> why? Don't a know. lot. Uh, I noticed that with, since I'm running the 1904 beta on the X230, uh, I noticed that there's a lot of like core desktop environment uh, elements that are running off of snaps. Why? I didn't yeah. see much. There was a GTK theme. Um, calculator. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Gnome system monitor. Now, I went to the snap store because you know, I... I want to try this stuff because I like the idea of you yes. know, flat packs and snaps. I was like, this, this, you know, it's not ready for production, even though it's being tested in production. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still it's afraid. It's the future. Like VR. Listen, man. <laughs> 30 years. All right. It's like Fusion. I tried the Brave browser uh, from the Snap Store. It went in. I was like, oh, that's neat. Don't have to add the repo and I don't have to deal with like Chrome and Brave repos fighting with each other, which they like to do. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to six, how many seconds does it take to launch the Brave browser for, in Snap format? More than six, <laughs> right around, yeah. right around six. And this is on an okay. NVMe drive. <laughs> yes, um, um, yeah. <laughs> on an eight core, sixteen thread part. Uh, yeah, long enough to open terminal and type in htop. <laughs> <laughs> the what are you doing moment? Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Are we up to anything? Did I misclick? Did, this is not going to happen. So, I. Just put the repo in, and I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> it's been fixed, but yeah. update, update your business. You know, keep those auto updates on. That's a beautiful, yep. beautiful thing. Ah, uh, Plasma 515. <laughs> Yeah, so this is exciting. KDE Plasma 5.15 has been released with ton, a ton of updates and user interface improvements. And I was really happy that the screen reader now supports desktop icons and the alt tab window switcher. Uh, this is something many of my, actually my blind friends have complained about not having. Um, KDE is one of the, the most used um, in the blind community. So that is really, really great. And another one was KRunner no longer shows duplicate bookmarks from Firefox. That was always annoying and created a lot of visual clutter. And uh, Flatpak packages now have app extension support in Discover Software Center. And now you can choose which ones to install. So that's yes. that's wonderful. That was one of the biggest updates. <laughs> it's it's actually good to see uh, Flatpaks getting a GUI installer, even if it is discover i've tried discover uh i yeah. wanted uh to like discover because it's yeah it's a gui installer for packages i haven't a, a hated any bit of software as much since i don't know package kit from mm. back in the fedora <laughs> 13 fedora 14 days that was atrocious discover is atrocious except it's written in qt so it's a cute kind of atrocious <laughs> yeah fortunately they've done a lot of updating to discover on the visual interface and whatnot so that that it's still that's, bad. that's great it's still <laughs> yeah it still has issues and it but it, and it is pretty but it it um it is getting See this, better <laughs> this laptop right here it's running uh, KDE Neon Developer Edition. It's like the brand new version of KDE. And Discover is horrible. Yeah. What are you doing, KDE? Okay, Pedro, what one of the things you have to explain to me with um, Plasma is what? what's the pager? 
the what pager in kde oh the pager that's uh it's the notification ticker and the uh uh like work desktop uh the multiple desktop manager yeah and it basically keeps track of all of that Uh, if you have multiple activities, uh, it also keeps track of all of that. It's uh, a very useful tool if you like having multiple different activities with multiple different uh, desktops for doing specific things. That's one of the things that KDE does really well. Part of the reason why I want KDE to stop sucking as much. <laughs> uh, but Positivity, yeah, Pedro. Learn to use your positivity because uh, <laughs> Wayland support for the pager yes. is now a thing. And a lot of people seem <laughs> yes. to be really happy about that, which, you know, I can cheer along with the crowd without knowing what we're cheering for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More Wayland support is good, yes, or I suppose it will be good when Wayland gets any kind of adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we're just not there yet. <laughs> so coming up next is something I know a little bit about, not a lot, mm -hmm. as I'm furiously trying to get to my home folder so I can pull up that picture that we... Um, <laughs> Uh, give me an intro, Pedro, on the OBS rundown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, OBS put out an announcement on Twitter a couple of days ago, and four days ago, I think, and they said, there's a new release candidate out, uh, come and help us test, like, kick the tires, push it to its limits, let us know what, <laughs> what works, what doesn't work, and uh, they have released. It's on GitHub. You can just pull the Git, build it for yourself. Uh, most distros, well, not most, but some distros have PPAs that include the RC uh, releases for OBS. Um, so just have a look through your distros repos. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. I had to build uh, yesterday for the stream. I actually had to build uh, OBS 23 RC1 so I could do some streaming for y'all. And it worked. It worked Yay. very, very well, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I was really impressed with with all the the new additions to especially with audio. They added limiter and expander audio filters, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they now have um, has FFmpeg multi track audio support, which is a, a really big deal. And you can also add a fourth mic and auxiliary audio option now. So that's that's yeah, a lot of really good uh, updates to OBS. I'm definitely digging it. Um... This is mm -hmm. like a two-day-old build, but the NVN code stuff is really nice. One big thing, yeah. important thing, big, mm -hmm. big important thing, if you've had multiple cameras, and mm -hmm. this, you're like, okay, that's just your issue because you have three or four encoders. <laughs> I'm like, okay, multiple webcams, like say you wanted to do an A-B shot or something like that. Mm -hmm. This could get dicey with OBS up until mm -hmm. now because it would just be like, yo, here are two cameras, and it flips around. Now it identifies them by the USB kernel identifier. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. So <laughs> even if they're all the same name, like ours are, you can go, oh, here it is. Here it is. This is something I had custom UDEV rules set up for previously to make that work. And it kind of worked. Um, and there it is. Working nice. Before we went <laughs> live. <Yay>. And, um, <laughs> Yay. We get a bunch of things. The audio stuff we handle. We just have like one connection going into that. But uh, it seems to be working quite well. Uh, I don't know if we'll see that the RCs in a release, like in a package. Hmm. Usually They'll, not. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It, there are or there is one um, PPA that I know of that keeps track of the current Git releases of um, OBS, or it used to when I used Ubuntu on this box. Uh, so they may not even be updating it anymore. I may very well be yeah. talking out of my... There was posterior. one way back when, like, <laughs> FFmpeg Next. This is another thing. Like, you're not going to be, like, visually, if you're going to be using the NV encoder, which is something to really pay attention to if you're with Turing, with the mm -hmm. 20 series, or even the 10 series, Maxwell? No. Yeah, uh, no, mm. Pascal. 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 Yeah, right. Mac Maxwell were the 900 series. 9 series. Yeah. Okay. That is definitely going to get you a bit of improvement. Um, eventually, if you're going to be running the 418 drivers, you're going to see that, but you're going to be building FFmpeg yourself. Because, well, if you're on uh, Ubuntu, you are, because it doesn't ship with that for reasons unbeknownst to me. 
<laughs> That's my story. LibreOffice 6.2. <laughs> Yay, LibreOffice 6.2 has been released, which brings new interfaces and performance improvements to the Office suite. And a, a new tabbed interface, which is like Microsoft Office ribbon interface, which we all like really love, not, <laughs> is now <laughs> available for all the programs in the suite. I always hated that ribbon interface, but anyways. It's horrible. Of, As it's someone horrible. who has to deal with that on a daily <laughs> yeah. basis, it's horrible. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but they have a new alternative interface called Grouped Bar Compact, which is available, which combines traditional and tabbed interfaces and is great when desktop space is at a premium. So it kind of gives the best of both worlds, traditional and ribbon, and it's it's good to use on, on uh, low resolution uh, desktop spaces. <laughs> and you can also copy pasta spreadsheet data natively in Writer now. And that was that's actually a really big deal. <laughs> That was great. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I wanted to try, but I haven't had time yet, is uh, I have two uh, CSV files that I captured with uh, <laughs> GLX OSD, which were the frame times of the um, RVGL, the native uh, OpenGL re-implementation of the Revolt uh, binary. And... Mm. Yeah, it, that game on a current system renders at well over 300 frames per second. So even though I only did uh, like a two or three minute race, those files are well over 50 megabytes uh. of just raw frame time. Wow. <laughs> and whenever I fed that into uh, LibreOffice Calc, it would poop the bed. <laughs> it would poop the bed. In a horrible way. Horrible way. <laughs> you need to open it in something better equipped, like GEdit. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, in GEdit uh, and Nano, they would open the files just fine. You just see the values. It's like, okay, but yeah. I actually want to build a graph out of those values, so I want to open it in LibreOffice uh, Calc. Nope. Have you tried feeding it mm. to Google Docs? Uh, uh. Yeah, it just goes, nope. That file is, uh, I can't remember the exact uh, error message, but it just says that the file can, uh, cannot be parsed or something like that. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely something to try. Uh, well, th this is the show that brought you Fedorf. Yes. Yes. Pedro. <laughs> yes. Fedorf is best dwarf. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we get a, a Fedora logo redesign update, and it's looking good. They did choose to use the Candidate 1 Fedora logo over the Candidate 2 logo that Pedro and I liked better from mm -hmm. the article we talked about last month. The Linux community also liked the Candidate 1 Fedora logo better, and the design team realized that Candidate 2 was too s similar to other logos. Also, Candidate 1 was more like the original logo. And now we have have uh, uh, several more uh, logo candidates. And from them, I like candidate number two. Which yeah. is For everyone yeah. watching, um, <laughs> if you're playing the home game and you're looking at <laughs> options one through five going, what's this a hidden what's object game? Yeah. You're not alone. <laughs> Like, no, that's yeah. uh, that's just different uh, formats to show how the logo would look given JPEG compression, PNG compression. Incorrect, Pedro. Yeah. There are scale. slight differences no, in each one of the There logos. are differences, <laughs> yes, which I go oh, into really? detail. I just, detail I just attribute <laughs> that to uh, like different compression because they look the same. Yeah. <laughs> Pedro hates art. Oh. <laughs> But his Fedorf was wonderful. I thought that was great. No, it wasn't Jill. <laughs> yeah. That was like two minutes in GIMP, okay? Yeah. Aww. <laughs> but I thought it was clever <laughs> to to you know, to to switch the logo around and <laughs> and put the F as the F for the logo. That was cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right. So um have you been Desperately, desperately wanting a, to build your own Risk Five PC. Nope. I know a couple of people in Discord, our own Discord, have been like foaming um, at the mouth over the idea of Risk Five, and they want to have something to play around with. And well, someone did. This bit of news comes from abopen.com. I'll be a link in the show notes, of course. Uh, Andrew Back actually wrote the article, and it's uh, yeah, it's a complete Risk V system. 
uh, the Sci Five High Five Unleashed. Uh, that's the board that has the 64 bit quad core Risk V processor uh, that's built on a TSMC 28 nanometer process. And my brain, wait, wait, 28 nanometers? What's that? An Athlon 860K like the Kaveri series APUs? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It is a process that's tried and true. It's actually put out a few decent, pro uh, a few decent processors in its time, and this is a completely new architecture using that very same process. So it that... looks like an Altair case. I'm just saying. Yes, <laughs> it does. Ben. <laughs> Uh, the thing here is because it was the what I scoured this uh, article for because they say yeah it runs desktop mm. Linux mostly everything works out of the box it can do PCIe uh, USB 3.0 it can do NVMe it can do SATA SSDs it can do like indicator LEDs it can basically do anything that you'd expect a traditional computer to be able to do it's just running in Risk V. Uh, so I'm like, okay, but how much does this cost? If I wanted to get one of those right now, how much <laughs> would I have to spend on it? Zilch. There's no information on pricing. It's not even mentioned yeah. anywhere in the article. If you get to ask, so. man, I'm really impressed. <laughs> yes. Him being able to throw PCIe and chip link. This is all done with an FPGA. Yeah. <laughs> My kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> This is brilliant. Um, interesting yeah. video to watch. Getting a hold of these boards, even if you can. Yeah. I don't want to say it's priced in the if you got to ask category, but get ready. 1500 according <laughs> ready. to yeah. Foxy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Foxy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say around seven, but all right. Well, that might be $1,500 reduced, too. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> could be. Uh, neat, neat, neat. Huge. Mm -hmm. I just love the excitement around Risk. Yeah, it's wonderful. Because, yeah. yeah, it's it's an architecture. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, it's, new. Oh, it's the hot new thing. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, yeah. Infinite storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's basically. Right. <laughs> a file to video tool. This yes. This is kind of interesting. <laughs> you know, it's a small program to convert any file into a video. It's to design, convert, and recover videos even after they were uploaded to not YouTube. Basically. Um, all it needs is FFmpeg and libgdkmm. So, what are you mm -hmm. thinking? You're like, I don't know about this. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Uh, uh. You kind of <laughs> got to think about stechanography <laughs> when, yeah. when you're putting this together. It's going to give you a static image that has data bits in it that can be played back and reconstituted into things. Mm -hmm. So when you have sites that basically YouTube again, allow you to just upload hundreds of hours of anything you want. Yep. Well then things could get interesting question mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I'm actually surprised there hasn't been more projects that attempt to do something like this oh. <laughs> because the YouTube loophole is a very significant loophole. It's like, okay, just take whatever file you want to upload and you're suddenly out of space on your Google Drive, on your Dropbox, on your OneDrive, whatever. It's like, oh, YouTube, I have basically unlimited storage. Turn that into a video, get YouTube to recognize it as a video, even if it's just a still. Upload it as a private thing so no one else has to see it and leave it there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so you're, well, you're kind of dealing with YouTube, which will just kill videos yeah. out of spite for no reason if yes <laughs> it's, it doesn't have to be youtube i chose youtube because it's like okay uh um, yeah it's the most known one yeah, but true. uh the if this takes off i can see alphabet and the googs and youtube themselves going yeah we need to put mm -hmm. the kibosh on this uh so it would be interesting to see what like the fallback of that would be, but they would never make this public because that would mean informing the uh, general populace that you can do this. Here's the thing. <laughs> I was watching mm -hmm. the original thread on Reddit uh, where the mm -hmm. developer posted this and the immediate thing was like, th th pretty easy to detect if we're looking for this. Mm -hmm. Like, don't worry, next version, you can do it. You can embed video on top of it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just to have an actual video on top right. of it. Yeah. <laughs> cat videos. <laughs> Filled with data. Uh, finally, a use for cat videos. Jill, you got some thoughts on this. Uh, oh, yeah. And and this, of course, can be used for, for uh, local uh, video files. And in today's day of gigabyte and terabyte file sizes, uh, yeah, corruption is very commonplace in, in uh, vid the video and animation world. And I could have used this years ago <laughs> doing uh, freelance animation and when I was an animation student. And one of my tricks I used to do, you know, before software like this came along is to to uh, what, uh, recover corrupt video files was to run them through test disk and photo rec. And I would just copy, make a copy of the corrupted file for backup and then delete one of the copies and run photo rec to recover a deleted file. And this would sometimes fix the corrupted video as well. So this is a, <laughs> a trick you can use out there. But but again, now that, that we have, uh, have uh, Pyga Masher, yeah, this is not an issue, <laughs> and uh, this will be great. So, and VC VLC is also an ex is excellent at fixing corrupted video files as well, and so is Handbrake and FFmpeg and Caden Live. That's if you can open the files, if it will let you open them, and you can convert them to another format. Sometimes it'll uh, fix the botch I frames and F frames and all the in betweens. <laughs> what Pedro? Uh, no. <laughs> I never thought of this the way that she'll described it, but okay, oh. maybe that's just my shortcoming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going on. Um, thanks to awesome work, Felix Singer has a thing about core boot. Yes, yes, uh, he does, and uh, <laughs> he basically made the System seventy six. I can't remember which one it is. It's, I think it's the Galago Pro. Uh, it, they made the System76 Galago Pro core boot compliant. Uh, basically, you can have core boot, you can build mm -hmm. core boot, you can install core boot on the, I think it's the Galago, if I'm not mistaken, because it is using the Clevo N131WU as the base. And if that sounds familiar to you, chances are you probably read the wall of text that I wrote about the Tuxedo Infinity Book uh, Pro that uh, I had a couple of, well, I had basically a month to play with. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Tuxedo. Very much appreciated. <laughs> um, they, uh, yeah, it's the exact same laptop. And... This is very good to see. This is actually awesome to see. I want Tuxedo to actually go, oh, here's the core boot option then. <laughs> yeah as we have talked about on lww in the past this helps complete and solidify the dream of open hardware and software that carl richel has been wanting wanting for system 76 yay and he tweeted that system 76 is still in the research phase using core boot but it is coming along very very nicely so that's that's excellent this is really exciting to go away from pro proprietary firmware yeah. So is that the big advantage, Pedro? Is that why I should mm -hmm. be interested in Core Boot? Well, mm -hmm. it uh, basically lets you control that big security hole that is the Intel management engine. Yes. But yes. I was told that keeps me safe. Uh, I, I think even Intel isn't trying to fool yeah. anyone anymore with that. It's like, no, this is a thing we have because we've been paid money to do it. It's like, okay, there we go. And don't forget, kids, mm -hmm. it's in your Ryzen processors, too. It's just got a different name. It's called a PSP. PSP. <laughs> Not All the right. PlayStation Portable. Can you hear me now? Better Bluetooth sound quality <laughs> on Linux is its thing. All right, the... Supposedly, mm -hmm. the from mm -hmm. reading through this, uh, Linux is the first to support LDAC with Bluetooth. Difficulty? You have to use a Bluetooth headset. Um, mm -hmm. Pedro, I have one or, somewhere. Or are you, I do too, somewhere. <laughs> like A2, A2DP. I remember getting that up and running. I don't know. Is this a higher quality audio compression algum thingy? It basically doesn't give you that white noise uh, that, uh, from what I got, admittedly, this article was very in-depth, very mm -hmm. technical, like to the point where I went, the what now? <laughs> 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 and, yeah, it's, uh, what I got from it is like that, yes, it is basically better sound quality, 
uh, over uh, Bluetooth, and Linux is the first one to support this, which mm. probably means yeah. that no other operating system will ever have this functionality because it's probably pointless. But that's just me being... Um, it's in know. Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Fedor. <laughs> It's yes. a <laughs> uh, maybe that's just me being cynical but yeah that that seems to be how previous technologies that started off like this tended to go but maybe i'm wrong and uh the thing that i started just like i'm reading through this i'm like okay this is great it's better quality is always great i have a um bluetooth uh headset that supports both hsp and a2dp mm -hmm. hsp is the mono one that sounds terrible mm -hmm. and the uh, a2dp is the you know the high quality one and i'm like okay uh last time i tried to pair those with a linux um operating system it would always default to <laughs> hsp which is god awful oh, it's is horrible. a2dp now the default <laughs> Can we do that before we start to introduce more functionality? This is like a personal that? problem. Get like that? the uh, <laughs> Go Group headset that I use always defaults to that. Yeah, yeah no, not that one that I got. Mm. I it know. supports both, but for some reason, Fedora, Ubuntu, Solus, they always default to HSP. Why? <laughs> Probably the headset. I don't know, man. Uh. Uh, this is kind of neat, but then good. I guess what I'm saying is I've never thought about using Bluetooth headsets on a desktop, ever. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of curiosity. Curiosity, when I bought a little Bluetooth <laughs> dongle and I mm -hmm. plugged it in and I was like, oh, that worked. Neat. Never happened again. At one time. <laughs> yeah, no, I tested it on the desktop too. It's like, yeah, once you mm. set it to A2DP, the sound is great. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I use it with the phone or tablet well i get the idea because yeah. like, i got a like xlr cable shoved in the side of these and uh wireless headsets would be nice mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. anyway they, it's they there. already fixed yeah, yeah they already fixed that big issue with a2dp sound where you would get like that two or three millisecond sound cut off mm -hmm. and then the sound would resume but you could tell that it was already out of sync with the video, and then after a couple of minutes, it would happen again, and it would get even worse. Oh, if you're dealing with Bluetooth, especially like Bluetooth, Android, Netflix, just give up. I mean, you're yeah. that's never it. You have to let your brain visually just take care of the sync because if you focus on yeah. it, you're like, oh no, it's slightly out by a nanosecond. Um, okay, that's going to do it for the news. We're going to get into a slice <laughs> of pie, but right quick, we're going to thank the beautiful people. Who are making this yeah. show possible? Jill, we got some new people this week. They showed up out yes. of nowhere and we're like, oh, wow, you want to support this idea? What's yes. wrong with you? <laughs> well, we've got Linda, otherwise known as uh, at Sorceress in, in chat. Thank you so much. Uh, she's uh, um, one of our new patrons, but her and her family, uh, notably Shay, Shay Dean, um, uh, have been huge supporters of ours for years and yes. they've been our patrons. <laughs> and then we also have Andre and David. <laughs> Big thank you to all of you. All and of you. it's good to see uh Shay and Linda actually on yes. Discord. I woke up uh, I think it was on Monday. It's like, oh, there they are. Yeah. Where have they been all this time? It's like you, you guys have been, you know, helping us out for a long time. It's like why not sooner? Oh, Google yeah. is dying. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things uh, we do have available is our super secret Camp Hagen Club. But now, I mean, it's <laughs> Discord, but 100 people in there. And it's relatively, when I say relatively, it's more active than OBS and NVIDIA's. Uh, <laughs> those are the two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, come in there, yeah. drop by, say <laughs> hi, hello, and all that. But best way to support a nonsense, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You get early access to the shows we do. If you like what we do, um, come hang out with us Saturday in the Discord. We have uh, LGC Radio, the pre pre super shows, in which you'll get a custom RSS feed. You can plug that in for any of the specials we do for that nonsense and uh we got a couple of reward tiers uh just to mm -hmm. say thank you back for supporting us all right uh oh humble that's thing oh, i think there's a yes. humble bundle out there, <laughs> like there is the paradox one is still going 
And mm -hmm. Frank, I didn't forget about you. There, there's Frank's <laughs> fine upstanding cannibal wall uh, for oh, anything that see. shows up from our wish zone. Okay, Pank. <laughs> Pie. <laughs> oh, yes. so uh, the raspberry pie uh people have been a bit busy and uh Yay. they are a bit poorer now because they decided to open a you know physical store in the grand arcade smack in the middle of cambridge in cambridgeshire in the United Kingdom. It's, yeah, it's oh, decent. Wait, wait, wait. I yeah. thought it was Cam Cambridgeshire in Louisiana, Pedro. No. No, 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 no. There's oh, okay. a Cambridge uh, in Boston, Massachusetts as well, but whatever. Uh, yeah. This uh, is a smack in the, I guess, the only place that would be more expensive to open a store and actually pay rent to keep it open uh, would be in London because that is the single most expensive place to open a store over here in Cambridge. Uh, and it is about an hour bus ride away from me. So I will, I have a week off at the end of February. I will be going there. I will take pictures. I will try to make video. Oh, so awesome. yeah, it's uh, the Raspberry <laughs> Pi store. It basically has display um, displays of uh, that you can actually play with. Coding, games, uh, embedded stuff, IoT, literally anything you can think of to build with a pie, they probably have something that... Teddy bears. <laughs> got teddy yeah. bears. You can put a raspberry pie in that teddy bear and make something creepy, like the Furby one. Oh man, if they had yeah. a Build-A-Bear, that'd be awesome. <laughs> put some hooks on it. <laughs> Hi, kids. Um <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was excited about this because finally a computer store of Linux being the dominate, dominant operating system, at least out of Brazil. <laughs> so that was that's just really, really cool. And, you know, the local micro center has an excellent Raspi section that does extremely well in sales and educating the general public that DIY DIY boards exist. So I think this is wonderful for them to do. So all those people who aren't techs can find out about the Raspberry Pi and Linux. <laughs> so. <Yeah. laughs> do, you, do you think we're going to see an issue with people walking in there going, this is the weirdest bakery I've ever <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so where are the pies? Yeah, I can see that happening. <laughs> you think maybe they keep some pies behind the counter just in case they're like, here you go. It's like, there you go. It'll, I'll be 20 pounds. <laughs> one thing i was surprised man uh i thought we would see like some pie high pricing in the store but no 25 no 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 yeah. they keep yeah. uh they do keep the prices and uh, apparently they didn't even bother to stock uh raspberry pi zero w's because they didn't have any hmm. <laughs> all right um oh. if you make it before pedro and want to tell us about it to the pie store which is Let very likely know. Um, cool. How can they go about doing that? Uh, we have another pie. Story. Pie, yes. Uh, pie watcher. <laughs> the ceiling pie. <laughs> I lost the tab. Oh, Oops. that's okay. <laughs> well, now you okay, can tell us about the pie watcher. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, uh, next up, when Finn gets it up, will be uh, <laughs> pie watcher. Pie watcher is a watchdog for your Raz Pie, and it is a small board that lets you fully shut down or reboot your pie using software via command line utility called Pie Watcher or by hardware. And it also has a nice hardware micro push button that will let you turn off the Pi completely, just like a desktop. And this is great because then you can program the Pi. You can set a timer to to turn it off at a certain time, like when you initiate the power off command. And then you can have it actually really turn off 10 seconds later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, it's it's just really nice to have a a way to turn off the pie completely. So um, you know that's really awesome, uh, uh, and also it's really good for you know disaster recovery and uh, for people doing projects that need the pies to shut down and and restart at a certain time. And it's a, a nifty little board. It's really awesome. It's yeah, it's like a teeny tiny little smart plug that instead of you having to have something external, you have a teeny tiny little PCB. It's like, oh, turn on at this time, turn off at this time. Done. Yeah. <laughs> I, one of the things I like on this page is the option. It's like, do you pay VAT? And it's only got two options. I don't pay VAT. I'm not in the EU. And I pay VAT. 
and <laughs> I am in the EU. Where's like option three? He's like, I don't want to pay that. I am in the EU. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the EU, but I want the cheaper price, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's a neat piece of kit. That's a neat piece mm -hmm. of kit. And I can think of a couple of uses for that. Or at that price, buy it and come up with some, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, take two. If you would yes. like to get a hold of us and tell us about use cases for uh, your, I don't know, mm -hmm. ceiling, ceiling pie. pie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, or if you do end up uh, going to the Cambridge Raspberry Pi store and you want to send us your pictures, you can do that. Yes. Just go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, uh, pick LWDW from the selection box, and we will be happy to show your pictures right here, right now, or your video, if you so choose to share it with us. There's also ways to get in touch with Jordan if you'd like to ask for relationship advice, or uh, if you want to send some hate mail for that Saturday show, What We Do. <laughs> okay, so we have mm -hmm. the one bit of uh, feedback this All week. Right. Bring it. Yeah. And it comes <laughs> from Testman, and he asks, do you... Dudes even have guests on LWDW? Bro, do you even do it? Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> no. Dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Iculus for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt Scott Hartley. for another. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any of you know the dude that goes by the name of Ross Scott? He made the Freeman's Mind and is otherwise uh, somewhat... Well, no, well, no on the internets. Okay. Uh, he is getting warmed up for Linux since he is getting ready for the moment when Microsoft and or game industry make getting games to work too painful. You dudes could borrow him for a podcast or two and exchange ideas. Also, there is Nixie Pixel, girl who is very much into Linux but seems to have fallen off the internet. Maybe you can check on her and discuss common interests. Interesting that you'd bring up Ross Scott because I was actually in a back and forth uh, with him over email. Yeah. When he put out a video saying that he wanted the quote unquote Linux experts in the audience to get in touch with him because he uh, he had some questions to ask because he's working on a video. He didn't that's... ask it in the correct way. The correct way <laughs> is to say this can't be done on Linux. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I said, okay, I'm not an expert, but I have been getting games to run on Linux for a while, including uh, wine games. So I can probably help you. And that's exactly what he was doing. He is actually working on a video that assesses the feasibility of Linux and running old versions of Windows or running in virtual machines or whatever the case may be to get... Uh, access to those old games because he's very much into like game preservation making sure that you can still play the game as it was intended to be played 30 years down the line that's like his goal that's his focus so yeah we're going back and forth and he went a bit quiet because he mm. moved and i moved and i guess i have to send him an email again it's like yo want to be on the podcast uh -huh. that's something we can arrange yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, test man, and good idea about Nixie Pixel. I mean, I would, I would, I would love to interview her actually. So that's that. That's a good idea. I'll have to put her definitely on the list. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, yeah, because she was one of the first ladies to to do it. And my other favorite is Mary Tomich from from uh, Sunday Morning Linux Review. She's she's really great too. So, um, but one of our plans is at scale is doing interviews with developers and members of the community at the con and getting people to be interviewed on LWW. So that'll be really great. And I have a lot of people that'll help out if Jordan comes, he will and empty and Alan and Matthew and everyone and, um, mirror and everyone's that that's going to be there is going to help out with that. And we got several cameras together, so that'll be cool. <laughs> Exciting. Should be interesting. <laughs> There's a gang of people to get on. There's a lot of developers that I personally want to talk to. Yeah. Right now where we're sitting is this has been like, mm -hmm. yeah, because we can technically throw one more person, but we got to lose something. We don't have yeah. the actual yeah, real that's... estate to pull it on. But yeah. I'm thinking uh, I'm not getting an mm -hmm. ultra wide monitor, but I am going to be picking up that uh, UHD monitor. So we'll. That's going to be a thing. Look forward yeah. to that. 
<laughs> Let's see, what month is this? February? When, uh, yeah, it'll, yeah. yeah. Towards the end of February-ish. Towards the end of March. Uh, that's a fair warning to everyone out there. <laughs> <laughs> because we have the capacity to do it. That's just like one little yeah, extra thing. That, been... that, that's turned into my unicorn thing of <laughs> yeah. one more person to get on the show. I mean, we can get rid of Pedro and bring somebody in anytime. <laughs> I will gladly uh, give my seat if need be. I would get, you know, my soapbox on for that particular week, but that's fine. I think the only thing, and it's not even like, the comfortable thing is we have a schedule for the three of us to be here on a Wednesday, and that's what we want yeah. to, to bring somebody in without having to do it out of sequence or missing a person or say, hey, we're going to do this. Exactly. Boom, here's the person. Yeah. Hey, thanks for showing up and continuing mm -hmm. on with the show. So... Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Yeah. I like the ideas. <laughs> Keep them coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that's going to do it this week. Do we, do we have any yeah. bear words of warning? <laughs> no. Bear words of warning? <laughs> bear, bear words. words. <laughs> <laughs> I got some bear words. <laughs> <laughs> Monsters. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> 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 thank you, Van and Pedro, once again. <laughs> and thank you, Jill. <laughs> Always got to do that, of course. <laughs> and thank you to our wonderful executive producers, our Theron and Foxog, Andrew, Empty, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barbrandt, Drummer, <laughs> and to all oh, our on, wonderful Jill. producers. <laughs> go on, there's plenty of producers. Come yes. on. Uh, oh my, I don't know if I can say it that fast. <laughs> Grayson, the Targos, Freedom Penguin, uh, Jack, Eric, Todd, Matthew, uh, Nubin, Luke, Matt. <laughs> I can't do it fast enough. <laughs> there's a lot of you, is what we're saying, and yes. we appreciate Lots you of... all. Thank you That's very a much. wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. We love you, chat room. Thank you so much to all we'll our be patrons. Back next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>